Uh, another question I wanted to ask you about is because you're taking this uh, from uh, originally a, a paperback and, and, and expanding out to a middle grade, there is, it's a historical novel. There is, has to be a lot of research that went into this. Um, so how much time were you spending researching things like the time period, the location, the mercy train? I know uh, PTSD had to come in at some point. You had to do mm -hmm. research for that. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I did do some research initially when I first discovered um, about the train. Um, and then I just jumped into, um, you know, the story. And then when I knew I wanted to um, try it as a novel, I went back and did a little more research. Um, and then I did it on kind of an as need basis until we had that seven year gap. <laughs> um, and yes, I had notes still, but I thought, you know what? I'm starting fresh. I, I wanna research all over again. So I, I traced um, everything I'd done um, before. Um, what, I, what I found um, at the University of Texas at Austin campus, um, is the LBJ Library and Museum. And what I didn't realize when I first started um, writing this book or picture book um, is that in that library are the Drew Pearson papers. And Drew Pearson was a um, radio commentator and columnist who was the American link for the Mercy train. And he and um, President Johnson uh, were friends, so he donated a significant number of his papers to the library. So at that library, I was able to read train schedules, um, telegrams, memos, newspaper articles, and more about um, the train. And it was just, it was just, a, it is a phenomenal um, resource, but that wasn't my only one. I went to other libraries and um, I even went to uh, the Austin Steam Train Association, which is now located in Cedar Park, <laughs> which is a town just outside of Austin. And they have um, a refurbished Texas Eagle boxcar there, which, um, the character Glory B spends about a minute on. Um, but I went there so I could get the interior of the boxcar, you know, just right. I love research. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> it's so much fun. Um, there's so many like wonderful the discoveries. Start. You're, you're all about the glory of knowledge. This is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here's the, 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 the devil's advocate question, because I know the answer, but I, I still like to ask the question. Uh, and that is when you're doing that, when you're getting the interior of the train exact, uh, when you, you're looking through the, the train schedules, the only way that I, the reader, am going to know that that train schedule is not correct uh, is if I go and I check the train schedules. Ah, ha, 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 Miss Bastard, you, I, I've got you here. <laughs> so is, is it? Uh, is it that much of a concern to have done that, or is it just the fact that you know the time the time schedule wasn't correct? Um, well, I t actually I tried to be as correct as I possibly could be <laughs> with the train schedule, um, just because I I'm all about details um, in in life and in um, in writing. So um, I. I did the best job that I could. I'm not saying I got everything right or that it's perfect, but I did the best job I could in order to find, um, you know, the details I needed to make the story as real as as possible. Um, there is no Gladiola, Texas, <laughs> um, but. Um, I based it on um, the main street anyway, on a small town um, outside of Austin called Smithville. And in my mind, Gladiola is somewhere around Round Rock or Taylor, which is north, northeast of Austin. So I did, 
I have to, I feel like I have to know these things and um, for my own sanity and benefit. And hopefully that seeps in um, to the stories so that readers feel like, oh, this could have actually happened. 